Hello and welcome. This is Dee from Dee's Fine Art and today I'm going to be working on an acrylic painting. I've got a bit of an idea in my head. I'm going to see if I can implement it and we'll see how that goes. I've got my molding paste and some coarse texture gel. And then I'll be making the third texture that I'll be using uh, by myself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some frog tape. Uh, this is painter's tape or artist's tape. Um, and I'm going to section this off into like three bits. it really stuck. a little short. So I will have to be careful and add a little bit more to the sides here. Try to align it perfectly, which is quite difficult. <laughs> well, let's hope that's good enough. We'll create a little bit of a jacket thing there. So. I'm gonna redo that. There we go. On this side, it's a little less of a, an issue because it's on the side, but still, I do want it to be good line here, right there. There we go. just need to make sure these are well um, stuck to the canvas because I don't want to start painting and have the paint go under them and you know all that okay so I'm going to start with um, applying some of these textures I'm going to apply them as is from the bottle uh, so and then I'll color it later one's even open. Yep, it is. Nice. Right. So we'll start over here.
Okay, so I'm applying this layer sort of in a bit of a like not haphazard. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep it fairly flat like that. Still textured with the because it's like sandy and grainy. But yeah, I'm trying to apply it with finesse here. <laughs> it's not easy because you can still see uh, the canvas showing through in some of these uh, some of these some of these areas, which is okay for now because I picked a black canvas for that reason. I'm going to be doing these in a darker color probably all right let's see i think i'll, I'll put a little more just to make it a bit smoother Corners are a bit of a problem, but that's okay. Now I realize this part has not been painted or you know has not been covered. So I'm gonna try to just get a little bit of coverage on it. Um, but actually the best thing to do would be to flip this so that I can cover it correctly. Um, a lot of these textures need quite a bit of drying time like uh, like the, the molding paste and this coarse gel. Uh, so it's not like acrylic paint where I'll put them on and they'll, you know, just be dry in a few minutes. So the first layer of this painting will just be putting on these gels. Okay, so I've got that one. I'm going to go for more of this texture, but less, um, you know, less uniform. I mean, not that this is really all that uniform, but you know, it's sort of flattish. Uh, but I'm going to be putting a more textured version of it over here. Here or I'm thinking about it. I might do if I do these three, then I can do these three and the other three like that. Okay, yeah, I can do that. This one I'm going to put on a little more randomly and haphazardly. I mean, I'm just putting it right now just to get some onto the canvas. But once it's on there, I will be changing its texture from uniform like that to more haphazard. Oh, that was going so well. <laughs> and then... Oops. Some of this went into the sun. I do, definitely do not want that. Sure that's not happening to in a lot of places. Like this. I like that. 
that off while it's still wet. Good, except again, I have, whoops, I have gone a little off track here. Here and here. I'm not like using water to get it off or anything because it's, I mean, it's not absolutely necessary that I remove that. Yeah, I would like to remove it a bit. So that's why I used a tissue. All right, what are we doing next? Hmm. I'm sort of blinking. It's very weird. <laughs> I, uh, I usually don't uh, blink while I'm just sitting here. Okay, you know what? Uh, since I already know what I want to do with the other one, or at least for two of these, I'm going to do that instead until I, you know, think of something to do with this. So this is going to be the molding paste. If I can get it open. Oh, goodness. That is difficult. Oh, there we go. The uh, molding paste gets stuck onto the sides here and it becomes really quite hard to open. So, uh, Word of advice if you're working on something with molding paste with a giant jar like this. <laughs> Try not to get much of it on the sides. Try to just scrape it off while it's dry now because it's uh I mean I wiped this before, like when it was still wet, but um I guess that didn't do a good enough job. Alright, here we go. I'll start here. a little difficult to reach the bottom here when you're painting like this so I gotta sometimes just move the canvas to the tip here so you can reach the edge
There we go. All right, I've got that texture done. Now, let's get it over here. I'm going to apply it similarly, and then I'm going to do the same thing I did here, which is use the knife to make some texture. apply it to the sides. move the knife around a little bit because otherwise I maybe not put the entirety of it down because otherwise you'll be able to see the knife. Like in the texture. Taking a little bit of time to make sure everything, all the sides are like covered. Like here, for example, it was a little light. shouldn't be using these tissues. Um, there are much better towels for this, if I can find them in my studio. It's been a while. <laughs> just want to get rid of any obvious texture that made it to another place. I scraped it off of that. It's not very obvious anymore. And oh, I know what the last one was supposed to be. Okay, so I've got these and I'm getting this one now. I just wanted to do striations.
cover these sides as well in the same motion. It's going to be a little harder to cover the top because, you know, the canvas is skinny and uh, so it's harder to do the, this motion on it, but we'll manage. Also, I forgot to do the sides on this one, so I need to do that while I'm here. I'm still with the molding paste. And then finally, I'm just going to cover this the same way I covered it. Look. Again, it's harder to go this way than to go like that, but it won't like follow the motion if I do it the other way. It won't follow the motion of the you know, on the canvas. I'm trying to get some of the molding paste that's gone off to the back to cover these sides here. Oops, I should not do that. flatten it out because it turned into a little more texture than I'd like. All right. Now I will go back in with the grainy texture and do the same. I really do need to find my uh, towels though, paper towels, so I will be back. some trusty Viva paper, paper towels over here. The one thing about texture, uh, whoops, maybe too much, is that it, first of all, it's going to flatten out a bit more than this, uh, so it's not going to be quite this stark um, once it's dry. The other thing is that I totally forgot what I, where I was going with this. Okay. 
Oh, I think I messed up the corners. I wasn't supposed to go in this corner. But yeah, I was supposed to do this corner. That's fine. Okay, so I've got this one here where we're going to do these striations. much harder to do it in coarse gel than it is in molding paste. So first I'm gonna again apply it with some generosity to the canvas here. Unlike the molding paste, I'm not like doing the striations to begin with because it's harder <laughs> uh, to do that. It's easier to do it when you've got a lot of uh, the texture gel on first. going to go in the opposite direction of down there where I was playing like where I did it like horizontally I'm going to go vertically here but let's see if I can even get this to texture the way I want it to I may need more gel I'll have to do that part when I stand up. To stop there uh, for these textures the third the third box like this third set of boxes I'm just gonna do with regular paint okay let me let me find my black paint, which is where I'm going to start, and if I don't like it, then I can change the color. It'll be a bit challenging to find the right the paint colors in this box of mine. I need a better system, but I don't have that much space. Um, so what I really like to do is have like a pegboard over here, but there's a big window and you sort of need the light um, and have all the paint on that. That would be really nice, like, you know, hang them all up like this. Uh, but that won't work for my oil paints because they don't have this thing in the oil paint. Um, so maybe it would only help with acrylics. I don't have black paint. Ah, there. Nope. 
Oh yeah, that is ivory black. Okay. I also have Payne's gray, but I don't think I'll be using that yet. Maybe in a bit. If I don't like how the black looks, I may switch. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the plain black, just covering, getting some coverage here. really missed painting. I was gone for um, three weeks and uh, and where, where I went, I like I went uh, to Egypt to see some family and friends and uh, where I went there, there was like I, I went to a, an art store and I was like, okay, I'm going to paint uh, while I'm here because, you know, I don't, I don't think I can go three weeks without painting at all or doing anything artistic. Um, and uh, and I was saving it sort of for when my husband was leaving. He was, he, cause he was going to come home and I, I was staying longer. Um, that did not quite work out <laughs> as well as I'd hoped. Um, what happened was the day he left, I uh, sort of broke my ankle. Um, or, well, I thought I broke my ankle. <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't step on it. It was really bad. I sprained it. I like fell while I was leaving my parents' house and, uh, and then I went to a hospital and he was like, yep, you broke your ankle. It's, uh, it's an avulsion fracture and uh, you need to come back in one week and get a cast. And like, I'm leaving in a little over a week. So this happened a Tuesday and I was leaving the following Wednesday night. Um, so, you know, not the next day, but a week later. Um, and uh, so, Anyway, about a week later, no, no, wait, a few days later, uh, I consulted another doctor who's a friend of my father's uh, in Egypt, and he said, well, because you're traveling, you need a boot rather than a cast, um, so if you can get a boot, that would be better. So I did. I purchased a boot, and I put it on, and it was so incredibly uncomfortable. It was horrible. So I... Um, so I, I like I struggled with it. My foot hurt. It was it was just miserable uh, until I went to another doctor. I went to a hospital to see just like if I'm doing it right, if a, if the diagnosis is correct, everything. And, and I went to a guy to this other doctor, and that doctor was just like, oh, god awful. He just scared the living crap out of me. He was like, you probably have torn ligaments on both sides of your ankle, and uh, you may need surgery, and at the very least you'll need a cast and uh, go get an MRI. So I did, I went to get an MRI, but of course, uh, by the time the MRI was done, he had left, so I couldn't see him again. And uh, he wasn't back for another couple days. And I mean, it took, it took us like five hours to see the doctor and get the MRI. So it was like a huge waste of time. Um, and so I wasn't really eager <laughs> on going back. Uh, to do that again and uh, with with a little bit of time the boot got more comfortable um, like I started getting used to it I guess um, oh, 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 uh -oh. definitely don't want black there oh actually it doesn't matter never mind I don't know why I'm fussing I have to paint it black anyway So uh, I sent the MRI results, which were given to me like on old school paper, printed out. Uh, <laughs> I, I gave them to the other doctor, the, you know, my friend's father, uh, sorry, my father's friend. And uh, he said, uh, well, the guy's right. You did t damage to both sides uh, of your ankle, which is weird because I, I twisted my ankle like this, like this, if this is my foot right here let's say this is my foot, I twisted it like this. Why would this get torn? Like, that doesn't make any sense. It just got shorter, you know? Um, but anyway, so that scared me. And uh, 
But he said, I think you can make it to Seattle with the, just the boot and there you can go see a doctor, follow up with a doctor. So that's what I did. I came to Seattle with the boot. It was a horrible ordeal to get here because I went through France and apparently like the French just have no respect for people with disabilities or something. It's, it's just, it's incredible how difficult they made my life and the life of every other disabled person. So it wasn't like a me thing, it was just a them thing. Um, it, was it was really bad. I was just, I'm just shocked that it's this bad. And you know, the EU has so much regulation on like everything that, that I work in the tech or I used to work in the tech industry. And so we are, you know, the recipients of a lot of that legislation and, you know, protection of consumers and protection of people. So I thought, you know, at least they'd have their, you know, disability rights down, but I guess not because it was horrible. Yeah, it was just, just so bad. I'll tell you about that another, another time. But anyway, I made it home. I went to a doctor here, uh, an ankle specialist, and he was like, yeah, your foot's not broken. Your ankle's not broken. Uh, it, you, like the, the fracture that's on there is probably old. Um, it's just a, a sprain, like a bad, really bad sprain. So you should take off the boot. You should start walking on it and you should use a, an ankle brace. And of course that goes against everything the other people told me. All three, doc, of, all three of the other doctors were like, you need a cast and it's broken. Um, so <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Um, anyway. So I've decided to believe the Seattle doctor um, just because it's it makes my life easier <laughs> if I can walk around a bit. You know, hopping around with a boot, it's just it's miserable. Um, yeah, it's rough. So I would rather believe them. All right, that turned out really nice. Of course, once it dries, it won't be this nice, but um, I'm hoping it'll still be good. All right, last box right here, which I did not want to be this. Um, like right, right next to this, I wanted them to be in different spots, but that's okay. There are, like, you know how they say there are no mistakes in art? <laughs> um, well, in some, way, in some way, yeah, there are no mistakes in art. Like, you know, if this happened, it's fine. If I, if I, like, don't change my mind and have to go back and redo it, then I would waste a lot of paint and a lot of canvas. Uh, and I don't really like wasting paint or canvas, uh, you know because it's not exactly great for the environment and also it's very expensive. Um, so like the less I can waste, the better. Now granted for this one, I am using um, Liquitex Basics acrylics. Uh, so it's not as expensive, but prices have gone up on, ev on everything. And so to replenish my supply, I'm gonna have to pay a lot more for these paints than I'm used to. Um, I used to pay I think the this thing was about like five dollars or something and i would get them with discounts and whatnot and i'd end up paying like three dollars uh for each of these and now they're a lot more you're lucky if you can get them at five okay, I think, oh, oh geez that was not good I just sprayed a lot of black paint on my face. Hope it did not get in my tongue. I don't taste it, so that's good. <laughs> Whew, all right, the paint on there is not enough to create the texture I want, so I have to put more.
Okay, I'm not sure if you can see it from that angle, but it's looking pretty good. Now I just have to wait for these to dry. Unless I want to mix the paints in with them now, which I really don't. Um, I don't want to have to redo all the textures, so I'm just going to wait for it to dry and then apply paint. So my plan for these lines that I'm going to remove after everything has dried and I'm finished with the, the front of this painting, like the, what I can see of it, I'm going to remove them and then I'm going to apply, I believe, uh, like a, what's it called, uh, gold leaf, uh, imitation gold leaf, obviously, uh, to, the, to the painting here with that you use like a, there's a gold leaf glue that you put on you leave it for 10 minutes to get tacky and then you start sticking the uh, gold leaf on and then you brush it off um, so that's my plan for that if i can find my gold leaf uh, which is in my studio somewhere uh, but yeah i have to find it first so anyway thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video once this is all dry